welcome to National Focus. I'm Adicia Burton. In the headlines, the Ministry of Health advises caution as it records an increase in cases of hand, foot, and mouth disease. The Chief Cultural Officer says the 2023 Independence Calendar of Events is unfolding smoothly. And a call for closer collaboration between the police and residents of Grand Bay. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services has called on the public to exercise caution as the ministry records an increase in cases of hand, foot, and mouth disease. In the first week of October, the ministry identified one suspected case. This resulted in a release of a circular by the Environmental Health Department on October 11, 2023. Since then, there have been suspected cases in five out of the seven health districts in children below six years old. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, Dr. Laura Esprit, explained that while the disease is more common in children under the age of five, older children and adults can also be affected. HFMD is a common childhood illness caused by various strains of enteroviruses. It usually affects children under the age of five, but can also occur in older children and adults. The disease presents as a mild to moderate illness, but can cause discomfort and concern. Symptoms of HFMD usually appear within three to seven days after exposure to the virus and may include fever, sore throat, a rash on the hands and feet, and small painful blisters in the mouth. In some cases, individuals may also experience a loss of appetite, irritability, and feel generally unwell. Due to the contagious nature of the disease, citizens are urged to practice good personal hygiene to protect themselves. Parents are also encouraged to keep their children at home if they show any symptoms of the disease. Hand, foot and mouth disease can easily spread from person to person through close contact with saliva, nasal discharge, fluid from blisters or fecal matter. Therefore, it is crucial to practice good personal hygiene such as washing hands frequently, avoiding close contact with infected individuals, and disinfecting commonly touched surfaces. To help control the spread of HFMD, the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Social Services recommends that parents keep their children home from school or daycare if they exhibit symptoms. It is equally important to seek medical advice promptly if HFMD is suspected, especially if an individual experiences high fever, dehydration, difficulty swallowing, or if the symptoms worsen. Individuals who contract the disease are asked to seek medical care and to stay away from others until fully recovered. While there is no specific treatment or vaccine for HFMD, most individuals recover within 7 to 10 days with appropriate care ample rest, and fluid intake to prevent dehydration. Over-the-counter pain relievers can help manage the discomfort caused by the blisters in the mouth and fever. It is crucial that individuals affected by HFMD avoid contact with others until they have fully recovered to prevent further transmission. 
The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services is closely monitoring the situation and collaborating with healthcare providers and the Ministry of Education to ensure the adequate management of cases and further prevent the spread of HFMD within our communities. Dr. Esprit once again encouraged citizens to be proactive and to pay more attention to their personal hygiene practices. We urge the public, particularly school teachers, parents, and children, to monitor for signs and symptoms and to promote hygienic practices. We encourage all to remain vigilant and follow the recommended preventative measures. For any concerns or inquiries regarding hand, foot, and mouth disease, please contact your nearest health facility. Principal of the Grand Bay Primary School, Mr. Evans James, says the police can be a positive force in improving the quality of life in the community. Speaking at a recent police outreach in the community, Mr. James noted that the difficulties young people sometimes present at school and in the wider community usually stem from home. The behaviors we are having in the school, both the primary and the secondary, it did not start in the primary and secondary school. Those problems started at home. The children from small are seeing so many things happening in the house at home, and they just bring it in the school. Hello. We have five, six, seven-year-olds in the Grand Bay Primary School bringing weapons at school. And we don't laugh at these things because that is serious matter. James says it's concerning that these young students are sometimes willing to use the gun in their possession to resolve conflicts. And they even threaten children that they will kill them with it. What are we doing as a community when me as the principal call a parent in to discuss the matter, they don't come. Those who come, the kinds of things they say, sometimes you even regret to call them and you shouldn't call the police instead, let the police deal with it. But involving the police tell, gives me as a principal the notion that, hey, you cannot do your work. No, we don't have to involve the police in all those things. We have to search our children's bags before they leave home in the mornings. When they reach in the school, if you, if you hear anything about the children, give us a little sip soap in the school. We will take it from there. But we know of too many illegal behaviors happening in Granby, and we keep our mouths shut. Calling on the community to do better, Mr. James noted that the majority of secondary school dropouts are males. In summary, the primary school has a number of activities planned, and we are going to focus our attention. As a staff, we decide to focus our attention on the boys. We, I am publicly asking for your support. When we ask you to come to the different activities that we have for the boys, especially the fathers, please come. Because we need you, we need to see the connection between you and your son and the other boys in the community for us to figure out what we are doing. If you watch the, the textbooks that the children use, I see many people who are teachers there. Most of the content in those books are girl-based. So we as a school have decided to form some other um, content material to suit the boys because, alas, if we don't do that, no matter what we do, God forbid, we will continue losing our young men and we don't know what, it, what the end is going to be. He maintains that everyone benefits when the community works hand in hand with law enforcement. Do not hate the police. Be a friend to the police. You don't have to go and drink rum with the police or go and play domino with the police for you to be his friend. His friend, talk to him. If you know something is happening in the community that will stem a problem that will cause a death, you should be able to confide in the police and say, hey, officer, go and check Evans in the school because I suspect something is wrong. So, I don't think he will say it's you that say him, but at the end of the day, and that help builds the relationship with the community. So let us do what we have to do as a community. Let us try to move Grand Bay forward. 
We are hearing too many things that we should not be hearing about Grand Bay, about Grand Bay. Let us move Grand Bay forward and do what we have to do to do it and work collectively as a team. Chief Cultural Officer Mr. Olson Matthew says the events calendar for Independence 2023 is unfolding smoothly. Over 30 events were scheduled for this year's 45th anniversary Independence celebrations leading up to November 3. In an update on the progress of the Independence calendar on October 16, he said so far the public has been satisfied with the caliber of events hosted. Independence started off with a bang on the 29th of September, Saturday the 29th of September, with the official opening ceremony at Mao, teaser grounds at Mao. Um, very well received, I must say. People still talking about you know, certain elements of that, especially the celebrity dance and so on. He says the Division of Culture is continuously exploring new methods of preserving Dominica's culture. We always brainstorming, so we, we always want to work within the present day context. Um, a lot of the things that we do were created in a different time. So yes, it's, it's a working model, but it's a working model in a different context. So we have, always have to try to be creative to adjust, to try to make things apply to the present day context. So that is, that is what we continue to do. We continue to brainstorm, try to be creative, try to be innovative, and make what we do appealing to the current generation, but still relatable to those who came before. Junet Paye 2023, Junet Chapeau Pie 2023, Flag Day and Independence Cultural Finals are some of the other successful events that have been hosted within the last few weeks. Mr. Matthew highlighted some of the upcoming activities for independence celebrations and appealed for the public support during the independence season. We have the Madame Wobdwiet coming up. We have had Quayol, as I mentioned, of course, Miss Wobdwiet still to come, Heritage Day on the 22nd at Woodford Hill. That's another big one. Um, the National Dress Parade, TV Lash Quayol, Cultural Gala, so, so many more activities. So just support as best as you can. As the government continues its mandate to provide a comfortable life for the country's most vulnerable, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services has hosted a tour to meet with Yes We Care beneficiaries around the island. Octavia Prosper has more. The government of Dominica, through the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, continues to develop ways to touch the lives of every citizen, to include the vulnerable and the elderly. This as Minister of State in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, with specific responsibility for senior security, children at risk, gender affairs and the differently abled Honorable Dr. Cassandra Williams and her team, utilized the month of September, which was also dubbed the month for the elderly, under the theme where we are older but not over to recognize the Yes We Care beneficiaries around the island. Dr. Williams described the experience as rewarding. Starting from September, every Saturday, we've been visiting everybody, all the clients, and it has been a very rewarding experience. Tiring at times because we've had to perhaps cross streams and, and climb hills to find these clients but very rewarding. We have been pleased at the reaction of these clients. Uh, they're very grateful that they have had the care of the caregivers on the, the Yes We Care program. We continue, although September is gone, we continue in the month of October trying to reach and touch and hear all of our clients and make them feel happy, make them feel that they still belong, they're still important. They're not just a name on a paper. Acting Permanent Secretary within the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, Mrs. Margaret Rudet Baptist, says the Yes We Care program, the brainchild of Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, must be commended. I must say too that the Yes We Care program is a godsend program. I must commend the Honorable Prime Minister for such, that's his brainchild, for such a beautiful program where we can bring care to the elderly, much needed care, because the, the, the elderly that we visited, all of them gave testimonies of the, the benefits of that program. 
And so I am indeed happy that um, we too could make a difference, the ministry can make a difference, that we can take care of the elderly. We know that they've worked hard, a lot of them, and contributed to the development of Dominica. Now they are at their twilight days. It's a good time to give them the love and to let them know that they appreciate it. And even if they are older, they are not over. Coordinator of the Yes We Care program is Mrs. Celia Hamilton. At the Yes We Care, we have a number of clients that total just about 156 clients. We have nine districts. And what we are doing here today, visiting um, the district of Portsmouth, Capuchin to be more specific, is bringing cheer, bringing cheer, bringing love to the clients via um, the use of care baskets. And as the Minister and the Permanent Secretary have alluded to, um, these care baskets are um, coming very vital, especially um, as we have been doing it for the month of the elderly. We have drawn into the month of October, but we are continuing because we figure that it is a very good initiative and um, they really do appreciate it. Just the mere fact that the Minister herself is there in person, the Permanent Secretary, how often do you see those things? You know, so they really appreciate that it makes them happy, makes them feel as if they they belong that as the program indicates by itself yes we kill and so i think that's a very good initiative some of the beneficiaries were emotional and in loss for words while others expressed their gratitude for the program thanks god for that i am Happy in that program service. thank you thank you i am in that program because you know that program god knows if you know that program how i would be mm. and my government Helps me because he put my house, my house also so, and he fixed up my house. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. The Yes We Care program began in 2009. Octavia Prosper reporting for the Government Information Service. Thank you, Octavia, for that report. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Bache and Buckle, Safer Roads in the Nature Isle. This message was brought to you by the Government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. The Division of Culture will host the Madam of Madame's Warp Duet show this Thursday at the Old Mill Cultural Center. The show, which forms part of the activities carded for Dominica's 45th Independent Celebrations, is set to begin at 8 p.m. with four women vying for the title. Cultural Officer Mr. Carlton Henry gave an overview of the show. Four former Madam Warp Duets taking part in what we call the Madam of Madams pageant. We have from um, Trafalgar, Miss Teresa Anthony, from Roseau, Veronica, Veronica Nicholas, from Petit Soufouye, Dorothy Laura, and from Grand Fond, Gwyneth Laza. This show will be, um, how would I say, no exception from what we have been having before. Some exciting shows with some beautiful ladies. Trust me, the ladies are, 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 are practicing and seeing that they are all winners, you're going to have a battle of champions. So this show um, costs only f um, $50 for standing and $60 for seating. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, in collaboration with WISC Caribbean under the Sustainable Agriculture in the Caribbean SAC project, 
with support from Bloombox, has handed over climate adaptive irrigation technology to the Dominica Community High School as part of World Food Day 2023 activities. The theme for this World Food Day is Water is Life, Water is Food, emphasizing the role of water in sustainable agriculture. In keeping with the theme, the handing over ceremony focused on forging the way forward, irrigate and educate highlighting the importance of irrigation technology in agriculture education. OECS country coordinator for the SAC project, Dr. Nadia Packet Ansem, described the theme for World Food Day as fitting for the objectives of this project. The theme for this year's World Food Day, as Mr. Ansem alluded to, water is life, water is food, is most fitting with the objectives of this project as it emphasizes the crucial role of water in sustainable agriculture. In line with this theme, this ceremony today deemed Irrigate and Educate highlights the importance of irrigation technology in agriculture, as well as the need for climate adaptive technology, which will be featuring today the control by the Rain Build app. Very fitting, Nima. It represents a significant advancement in farming practices for women and youth. With its Wi-Fi controlled features, this cutting edge technology allows for precise water management, ensuring optimal irrigation for crops. It also enables you students to ensure that you learn firsthand about the impact of water on plant growth, sustainable farming practices, and the importance of efficient water usage in agriculture. The students from Convent High School and St. Mary's Academy will also be participating in this project. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture with specific responsibility for developing community agro-enterprises, Honorable Lakia Joseph, says that the involvement of youth is critical to the implementation of sustainable agriculture practices. Through strategic investments in modern irrigation technologies, we enable our youth-led agro-enterprises and farming communities to flourish, making agriculture not just a tradition, but a dynamic and attractive livelihood option. Do you love agriculture? What do you say? Yes, yes I. <laughs> we acknowledge, sorry, as we move forward, let us remember that youth are not just beneficiaries of our initiatives. They are our partners and leaders in shaping the agricultural landscape. Let us support and mentor them, providing avenues for their voices to be heard and the ideas to be implemented. Together, we can create a community where every young person has the opportunity to contribute meaningfully to our food systems, ensuring not only their own prosperity, but also the well-being of generations to come. Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture with specific responsibility for fisheries and blue economy, Honorable Jolan Defoe, says preserving our water resources is critical to the country's food security. Water is equally as important to us as it is for those engaged in agriculture. And even more importantly, uh, for those that are involved in the rearing of crops and even livestock to be more cognizant of the people who tomorrow will invest in aquaculture because whatever practices that they do in terms of, of, of the fertilizers, of pesticides that they use, remember it is this very same water source that is going to to be filtered into people who have aquaculture ponds, and therefore the water quality becomes a major issue. Residues of pesticides and, and, um, and antibiotics from people who do treatments to animals and so on. So you can, you can begin to see the, the, the um, interconnectedness of all of our systems. So, so just speaking about irrigation in, in, uh, as a silo, is not enough. So I have to bring to the students the broader scope of that we are speaking of. Coming up next, the Creole News highlights with Jeno Jacob.
Bienvenue tout le monde à ce nouvel en créole. Non, mon c'est Geno Jacob. À nouvelle la jodi, Premier ministre Roosevelt Skerritt et puis Premier ministre Canada qui a conduit un sommet à Sam. Pays Dominique a observé journée manger la terre et puis résultat compétition culturelle finale. Premièrement, Premier ministre Dominique Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt et puis Premier ministre Canada Justin Trudeau qui travaille ensemble contre Chairman Yon Sommet CARICOM et puis Canada. Sommet là, c'est pour deux jours, au 17 pour 19 octobre dans les salaires. Fois Sommet là, c'est Strategic Partnership for a Resilient Future, Partner Strategic pour Yon l'avenir Résilience. Sommet là, qui fait coopération entre Canada et puis même CARICOM plus fort. Chairman CARICOM, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, qui conduit discussion et puis même CARICOM contre économie, business, changement climatique et puis assistance pour pays Haïti. Par le premier ministère Skerritt absent, ministère pour finance, développement économique, résilience climatique et puis sécurité sociale, Honorable Irvin McIntyre qui agit comme premier ministère Dominique. Dominique et puis les autres pays la terre observé World Food Day, journée manger mondial semaine salaire. La TEA observé World Food Day le 16 octobre toute l'année. Jus à la Kamete Klete a sou million moun ou la TEA qui a lité pour sécurité manger. Ministère pour agriculture, Honorable Roland Roy, dit World Food Day qui a battu pays force pour travailler ensemble pour faire yon meilleur la terre. Finalement, final compétition culturelle c'était un succès. Semaine passée, groupe culturel Capuchin gagne premier prix en quadrille Guamun, groupe culturel Pizza Van deuxième et puis Flamboyant Dancers troisième. En compétition chanson Creole Guamun, Paul Louis sorti premier et puis Wilfred Bruno deuxième. En compétition Hilanto, ça c'est talent et puis Zotei, Grand Fond gagne premier prix. Flamboyant Dancers, deuxième, et puis l'école Will Stratmo Stevens, troisième. L'école Convent sorti premier en chanson créole en catégorie Légion, l'école, et puis l'école Grand Fond, deuxième, premier l'école Cassibus, gagné Belle, et puis premier l'école Pierre Bush, deuxième. Compétition culturelle finale prend place en Fort Shirley Cabritz dimanche passé. Fois là pour 45 ans d'indépendance, c'est à nous célébrer. Ça, c'est tout à ce nouvel créole. Non, moi, c'est Geno Jacob. Au revoir. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I am Adicia Burton. Thank you for watching.